Welcome back. We are now in segment 7.10 and in this segment we will be discussing about DSR and asset coverage ratio. So in the previous segment we had discussed about DSCR, right? DSCR is debt service coverage ratio, right? DSCR is debt service coverage, coverage ratio. It provides the uh, rough figure for the uh, comfort level to the bank, right? Uh, so how many times the uh, the profit of the company, cash profit that is, uh, covers the uh, repayment obligation of the company, right? We've seen this in the previous segment. So don't confuse this DSCR with DSRA, right? In this segment, we are going to discuss about DSRA. So DSRA is debt service retention account, okay? This is retention account. So what happens is, you know, in, in project finance, uh, the cash flows are uncertain, right? It could, it, there's no guarantee that the, uh, the, the, the cash flows will be uh, generated as per the uh, projections of the company. So, for from bankers' perspective, you need uh, a certain amount of uh, uh, a certain amount of protection that in case the uh, envisaged cash flows don't materialize, uh, the repayment is not affected. Right? Because uh, this is actually DSR is for very a uh, big projects. You don't see this in normally term loans. Okay, in normal term loans where you come across an, uh, in lakhs or even sm small amount like. Uh, even lakhs, not just lakhs, even in crores, you know, up to 5 crores or 10 crores, you, you don't usually see this as DSRA. DSRA is stipulated by banks in very large projects, right? We, projects running to maybe 50 crores, 100 crores, uh, large projects, DSRA is stipulated. So DSRA is only for uh, big projects. So what, what, what bankers do is, uh, a separate account is created, right? This account is a retention account, in the sense that uh, the, the cash flows that the project generates will be going into this DSRA, okay? So DSRA is a sort of an escrow account. So all these uh, cash flows of the company goes into project, cash flows of the project go into this separate account. And slowly it get, gets built up, okay. So to what extent this DSRI is to be built up? So say for example, the repayment stipulated by the bank is quarterly uh, repayment, okay. So the, the repayment may be some 20 quarterly uh, installments. And each installment is 1 crore. This is the repayment as per the sanction term. So bank might say, uh, please, please create a DSRI equivalent to okay equivalent to two installments so two 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 quarters installments amounts to two into one two crores so the company has to create a dsra has to maintain a dsra which has two crores at any point of time right and this this this, this dsra will not be uh, touched in normal course neither by the company nor by the banker the company just bills the amount uh, to two crores and it gives it aside. It doesn't uh, operate. This, this is not a normal operative account. A normal, a normal operating account is a CC or a, a current account where regular funds come in and funds go out. This is a, a separate account. Uh, the company won't touch it, right? It will build build the two, two cross and leave it aside. The bankers also normally would not touch it, right? The bankers also no, normally would not touch it. So when this DSRA comes into picture is, uh, in case the, the, say for example, a particular quarter installment could not be met. Say December 31st is the due date, but uh, uh, but it's Jan 15th, or Jan 31st, February, still the company is not paying and the bankers feel this account is running into, uh, there's a risk of this account turning into NPA. March it's come, March 15th. So in another 15 days is going to turn into NPA. So when the bankers become uh, uh, very uh, concerned that this account is going to turn NPA, in a very critical case, what they do, they then draw from this DSRA. The bankers are uh, allowed, they have the power to draw from this BS, DSR. Usually it will be a consortium account. We're speaking of a very large project, usually a DSR is for large projects and large project finance usually is for a uh, consortium account. So, I, I mean, even, even it could be for a single bank, single banker, usually it's a consortium account. So, then in the in the, the that sort of a critical case, the bankers will draw upon this DSR. So, say for example, uh, they're drawn one crore. One crore goes. So, with that, they'll be meeting the this installment and the account will not be uh, uh, will not become NPA, okay? Of course, the DSRA balance will then become 1 crore, obviously, because 1 crore is a uh, draw. Then the bankers will be pursuing with the company to build up the DSRA again to 2 crores, okay? So, so the logic basically is, is, it is again another sort of a comfort to the banker, right? DSCR is a, a comfort to a banker in the sense that it's a comfort to the banker, but at the end of the day, these are projections, right? DSCR is just a calculation. It's a calculation of the projections. It's a calculation based on the projected financials. When, I, when you're saying DSCR is profitability, uh, plus depreciation plus term loan interest by installment plus interest. How are you calculating this DSCR? These are all based on projected financials. The numerator Getty. Where is it coming from? For the next uh, five or six years, you're calculating the projected profitability and then arriving at DSCR. So DSCR is high, say two or three. Uh, but just because it is high doesn't mean it's a 
a reality. Right? So these are projected financials. Ultimately, this may not materialize, right? And the projected profitability may not be achieved. But DSR is different. DSR is a is a reality, right? DSCR DSCR might actually turn out to be a myth. We don't know, right? The projected financials might be very rosy, right? But when it actually comes to uh, the reality, uh, the company may not achieve the projected projected finance projected um, projected profitability so dsr is different dsr is a not not a projected figure it is a reality so the company will be maintaining a real account it's a it's a true account it's a reality so dsr is a uh, a true account maintained by the company this provides a, a a real comfort to the bankers because in case in case the uh, the company could not meet the uh, repayment obligation then bankers will be drawing upon uh, this dsr okay so DSR, it is up to the bank to stipulate how much uh, DSR should be. Uh, say for example, this is a monthly instalment, bank may say six monthly instalments or three monthly instalments or twelve. Uh, depends on the riskiness of the cash flows they uh, envisage. Or if it is a quarterly repayment, two quarters, or three quarters, seven. Uh, it depends. It is up to the bank. So it is it is it is an additional fund, right? To the bankers in the, in the event that the project fails to generate the uh, adequate funds to pay the instalments. Okay. So DSR is usually funded after debt service, but before distribution to equity. Okay, so when it is released, it is released when the uh, DSRA is balance is high, right? So say for example, always the company has to maintain two two crores. In case the balance goes up by two crores, maybe then the company might draw. Maybe the that will be the agreement. But if it is an inadequate balance, it falls below below two, right? One point eight or something. The company has to replenish and bring it back to two. Okay. So what is the relation between DS? We we said that DS. Don't confuse DSCR and DSRA. They are two separate entities, but uh but are they related in some way yes if the dsr is below 1 right if if there arises a situation where the company is unable to pay repay the obligations then dsra will be drawn upon to to bridge this first shortfall okay so dsra is normally not a uh, normally not enforced right uh and nobody wants it to be enforced because neither the bank nor the company because when it is enforced it means the the situation of the company is not good you don't you don't actually want it to occur like it's like an uh, it's like an insurance policy you right know? so there is a Insurance policy which covers the which covers the life of a a policy holder. So if this person dies, he'll get a ten lakhs. You don't want this person to die. See, it's just the buffer, right? This is a safety. This for the safety. You don't want this policy to be enforced. You never want this policy to be ensured because when this policy will be ensured, only when the person dies. You don't want this, but it's only a, a safeguard. Similarly, a bankers don't want DSRA to be enforced. It's only because if if it comes to the extent of enforcing dsr it means the account is in a, a bad shape you don't want dsr to be enforced but it provides a sort of a, a safety net to the bankers okay uh, one more concept which you need to be aware of in project finance is asset coverage ratio okay uh, it's very commonly calculated uh, metric used in project finance so it it determines a company's ability to cover debt obligation with its assets right a uh, very simple formula it's obtained by dividing the uh, net fixed assets that is the uh, accumulated depreciation Taken off from the gross block, and then you divide by the terminal outstanding. So, say for example, uh, these are the financial projections. This is the this is the net block. So you can see it is decreasing because a depreciation is being applied. Okay. So terminal outstanding is slowly decreasing because repayments are going to be affected. Slowly, it's going to be decreasing. Maybe the company initially borrowed 50 crores and slowly uh, every every year is paying off 10 crores. Okay. So when you calculate asset cover ratio, this is net fixed assets by terminal outstanding. So it is two in the initial years, and then it goes on because the term loan uh, is dropping. Right. So even though the fixed asset is coming down, term loan outstanding is dropping at a uh, uh, at a uh, faster pace than fixed asset. So uh, your your asset coverage ratio goes on increasing. So what it uh, so so usually what so what it show what it tells you is how many times how many times your security that the primary security that the fixed assets will cover the term loan outstanding. So in a way in a way it it is linked to margin. In a way, it is linked to margin because because if if the margin is less, this term loan outstanding would have been higher. Say, for example, in the first year, net fixed assets is hundred, but instead of fifty, if the bank has sanctioned some seventy-five, you no, know, then then it it would have been only one point three three, isn't it? Not two. So, uh, in a way, it is linked to the margin. So, higher the margin, lower will be the asset coverage ratio. But this is the the calculation, right? Basically, it provides a a metric to measure how how many times the uh, the security that is the uh, fixed assets will be covering the term loan outstanding. Okay. So with this we come to the end of the segment in the next segment that is 7.11 we will be discussing about break even analysis okay see you then